Well, that's an immediate, uh, just unsettling opening, but welcome to the test final revelation. Uh, this is three out of three at the time, I guess. I didn't even look up if they were done with the fourth one. Uh, it's best to play the other two. This is real loud. You'll stand to get louder and more for the first two titles. Yes, yes. I urge you to play the test. Follow me the test. Uh, close this game now. Uh, I've already played the test one and two. Thank you very much. Okay. Make sure that you do it as honesty. Uh, be sure to take your time. This is the, the utmost important. Is it our old friend? Skull faces at. Oh, that's not good. When the sun comes crashing down and the heroes fade away, when darkness is all around and there is no light of day, I will come back for you so that you never feel alone. Never feel alone. My spirit will push through, your heart will forever be my home. And when the world spirals into abyss, I will be standing there, your embrace so long I've missed, my soul, my love I bear. And when every nerve has been left deadened and every ghost has left its shell, I will bring you back to your heaven as if you'd rescued me from my hell. As you've rescued me. There's no if in there. I think I said if. Doesn't matter. Skullface, is that you? Oh, it's the other homie, too. Oh. No matter what happens, I will always love you. Oh. I didn't even consider fate to be... I just assumed it's male and female, but I guess it could be two males. Who knows? With every ounce of my heart and each droplet of my soul, I swear to you, we're going to find a way out of here. That's weird. What do you need me for? Do you need me to answer more... Uh, weird dog questions? I'll do it. I'll do it. Who is it? Oh, you're different. Hmm, I wasn't expecting you so soon. Though I knew that one day we'd meet, we would meet in this room. You see, closely I've been watching you, studying every breath and every move. A few of my former colleagues you may have met. And a slew of questions you've answered without regret. I may be similar, but unlike them still. I'll make you swallow the truth like a bitter pill. I will peel the emotion from your soul and make you eat your feelings whole. The question I ask may be hard to answer, but I will cut the truth from you like a cancer. Both of us know why you're here. To open up and cast out fear. To be as honest as you can. To take angel's wing or devil's hand. And in the end, we both will know how to escape your undertow. Time is on your side, but mistakes are not. Misanswered questions lead to misery wrought. Take time to think before you decide. Dig deep for the answers that live inside. You may not go back, you may not return. One decision is made into your soul, tis burned. But before we continue, just know this. Your dishonesty would be very remiss. If your answers lack the guidance of truth, then your final destination will be rather uncouth. So with that being said, I need your heart's honesty. You can run from yourself, but you can't run from me. Thanks, spiky head. Let's get it going. Now let the examination begin. Do you ever feel like you just aren't... Why, well, yeah, everybody has that feeling, bro. Do you ever feel like you put more effort into friends or relations... Oh, like, that's... I frequently feel that way. I'm gonna bump it down just slightly. Do you ever feel like your life is going nowhere? Uh, like, ever? Sometimes. I gotta answer that honestly. Technically, sometimes... Not usually, though. Do you ever feel like you're trapped in limbo? No. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by seemingly trivial tasks? Like, not through the task itself. It's just an ambition thing, so not, not particularly. Are you sometimes afraid of what your future may hold? And no, I just kind of roll with things. 
Do you believe that your friends always treat you the way you deserve to be treated? Is that going back to like... I don't know. I'd say probably enough. I mean, my head's going in a long diatribe of, like, text your friends. Like, especially the ones that reach out to you. Because I hate being that guy, like... For some reason, that started bothering me lately. Like, when I feel like I'm doing all of, like, the contacting. Like, if I... Like, I feel if I quit talking to people and then... Like, I would never talk to them. I don't know. Maybe that's... I know that's a thing, but... I don't know. Something is lost and communication that I want back like the person to person thing that that's uh that's completely um I'm just gonna say yeah to that are you afraid of being the last person alive in your social circle no not really are you afraid of the existence of an afterlife and what it might know do you feel as though you're wanted in life <laughs> um Do I feel like I'm wanted? I... If I have to answer honestly, probably leaning more towards no. Do you ever feel like you just... Uh, frequently. Do you ever feel like a burden? Sometimes. Have you ever felt left out? Ever? Yes. Lately, no. Have you ever felt like a fa- I think everybody's felt that. Have you ever felt like you just were- Oh god, all the time. Literally all the time. Have you ever worked yourself sick? I don't know if it's- I, I would say yes, just because, like, I've- A lot of the times I stay up late doing this when I should be sleeping and- Eventually, the lack of sleep will eventually make me sick. It always does, eventually. Do you ever have racing thoughts at night that make it difficult difficult for you to go to sleep? Uh, yes, sometimes. Are you afraid to ask for help? Not with everything. I'm getting better at it, but... There are some things that, yeah... Do you feel like people often criticize you? No, not really. Do you ever feel judged by your friends or family? No, not particularly. Do you ever... F well, I could probably somewhat answer yes, putting more thought into that one. But Do you ever wonder what your purpose in life is? No, I, I kind of... I don't know. Leaning towards entertainment. But if you could turn back time for any reason, would you? No, I'm just going to let those decisions lay for themselves. And what is, is... Would you say they have many? I wouldn't say many. I have some, but many, no. Does meeting new people for the first time make you uncomfortable? Not at all. Does looking out the window at night make you feel uneasy? No, not at all. Do you sometimes double check that your doors are locked, even though you're... Like, every single day. <laughs> Do you feel like life is moving too slow? No, just the opposite, actually. Do you feel like... Yes. Do you feel uncomfortable when you're home... No, I am home alone all the time. For all you know. Would you consider yourself to be a thoughtful person? Mate, sometimes? Um... I guess would you consider yourself to be superficial my brain is completely like I'm sorry I gotta like that just means like like on the surface right existing or occurring at or on the surface yeah um no I'm just making sure, because, like, my brain wasn't registering what that meant. Do you ever judge others by the way they look or dress? Ever? I mean, not lately, but if you're going to say ever, like, when I was a teenager, I did. 
I guess it doesn't say did you, but it, it's do you. It's not really anymore. I don't really care. Would you? No, not at all. I think I've answered that a couple times. Have you ever bullied, been bullied by someone you cared about? I don't think so. Have you ever been a bully to someone you care about? I don't believe so. Do you try to keep a low profile and avoid attention from others while in a crowded area? So it's another thing that goes back and forth. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, probably, like, I'd probably more, like, if it's a, in a group of strangers. Like, maybe I just keep to myself more. Oh, I answered that wrong, I think. But again, it's like so close to the middle, like it doesn't really matter. Do you actively try to avoid busy places? Not really. But do you sometimes rather be alone than surrounded by people you care about? Yeah. Does making phone calls make you feel uncomfortable? It used to be, but it doesn't really anymore. Are you sometimes afraid to confront people even when they do something that bothers you? It's another used to be, but it's a thing, it's another thing that goes away with age. Like, you have to, people are so afraid of confrontation. Like, it's usually not that big of a deal. Like, especially if you approach it correctly. And don't be like, hey, hey, you cut! Stop that shit. Like, you can't do that. It's like, hey, this, this is like, it kind of bothers me. Can you stop doing that? Like, if you approach it gently, it's fine. Um, but no, not, not currently. Do you feel uncomfortable when committing to definitive plans for the future no you ever feel like no matter how do you how hard you try you can't yeah sometimes sometimes it's just a lost cause do you ever fear that you're failing those who care about you the most I maybe Me, I don't know. Um, sometimes. Does driving a vehicle give you? Yes. <laughs> Again, sometimes, but not in general. Are you afraid of export? No, not at all. Have you ever carried an object around with you that made you feel more comfortable? No. I don't think so. If I told you that I could guess your name correctly right now, would you believe me? No. Oh, I should be looking for secrets. I never do that. Well, based on the answers you've provided me so far, if I were to take a guess... N no. No. That makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, why? Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's spe speciesist. Does being around animals bring you a sense of peace? Not particularly, they're just animals. Do you sometimes believe your loved ones are lying to you when they say that they care? Not really. Do you ever feel like you pushed your love? You pushed your loved ones away. Probably. I mean, I guess I'll take this over the, the droning of the, the dead. I'm going to have to stop. Why? The truth that pours forth is incredibly clear. I hope that you're being honest for your own health. You can try to lie, but you'll be cheating yourself. I'd like to move on to the next phase of the test. A series of pictures to give your brain a rest. You're going to tell me what emotional response they bring out, which will show me what your mind is pondering about. So feast your eyes upon the art. Don't tell me to feast my eyes. That's just weird. And let me into that precious heart. You're just weird. For starters, better not show me a penis. Uh, that is a uh, that's a burst glare from Maple Story. 
Um. I don't really... It's relaxation. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Um... Um... Uh... Soulful? Uh, that is clearly called the... The Soul Abduction. A mind of misery. No. It could be the celestial stout. Don't just I'm I'm kinda of basic. Uh maybe it's the portal too. Kinda of looks like a portal-ish. Sure, we'll go with the portal. Very interesting. Moving on. What emotion do you is most present in this picture? Uh it looks like fire. I don't know. I don't really get like any feeling from this one. Uh, maybe numbness, huh? Again, it really doesn't like anger me or depress me or honestly. <laughs> what were these guys? Uh, stuck, abyss, toxic, demented. Life or exotic? Probably exotic is the first one that came to mind. The birthing, the blazing soul, the destroyer of sense. I will go with the blazing soul. I see. Next we have this one. Better not be a penis, I swear. Oh. Like... <laughs> This one is a little chaotic in my brain. Now you could say twin. It's it's I don't think it's quite mirrored. I don't think it's mirrored at all. But then again, it could be, I guess. I will say fraternal twins. Uh, this is clearly ref uh, reflection. I did see an eye at first, but we'll go reflection in the universe. universe noted. Take a look at this one. What the hell is going on in this picture? Uh... I'm gonna go with numbness on that one. Oh, oh no, like I don't really get. I mean, I see like a staircase, but it's just. Uh, probably the dimension door. That's peculiar. You're peculiar. This one's kind of similar to the second one. Ah, uh, this one's more chaotic, too. Even though it's... I don't know. Uh, yeah, it looks a lot like lightning. What do you think the picture is called? Nah, uh, the abyssal gaze. Hmm. Energy? No. Probably that. I don't know. Best suits it. And this here. Mm. I don't know. Like, this one is, like, the most... Probably that. I don't know why, but... <laughs> What fur do you feel describes the picture best? Oh, Cyclops, really? Oh, I guess I could see a Cyclops in there. Uh, I mean, the tunnel is kind of shrouded. I don't, 
really see a forest. Um, I could see this one being called Mind's Eye. I see. Now this one. Ugh. Thanks, I hate it. Dude, what is going on here? Not depressed. Don't get any depression. What's most present in this picture? Um, anger? What word do you feel describes this picture best? I don't see them colliding. I see them splitting. So... Bosoms. I mean, I mean, it kind of, kind of. I guess that fits best. I don't see feathers in here. What do you think this picture's called? I... Sure. What emotion do you feel is present in this picture? Uh, anger. Kind of an angry picture. That's clearly the... The world break? I don't know, man. Sure, Rage Incarnate. That actually, I mean, it's all angry. That doesn't, you know. How about this one? What am I... Ugh. Um... Relaxation again? I don't know a lot of these are that, but... Cyborg Veil Information Analyzing Monitoring Futuristic. Probably monitoring jumps to mind. The data sphere thought provoked incubation of dreams. Matrix Watcher. You do that. Again, these, like, most present. I thought it was asking, like, what I felt about it at first, so I answered the first couple kind of like that. I don't really get anything from this. I'm not much of an artsy person. It's not chaotic at all. Maybe that... I see it as like you're going through a tunnel and you're exiting there. So. Interesting. Take a look at these. Oh, that's... Um... It's kind of chaotic again. Um, it looks like it's... Yeah, either launching stuff or broken. I'm gonna go with that. I broke you. Huh. We're almost done. Oh. Uh, anger. It looks like a, like an angry slime. But oh, there's a slime option. What do you think this picture is called? Uh, <laughs> the sludge. Hmm. 
Yeah, it looks like I see these as eyes, like maybe a big mouth. Or maybe those are eyes and like, it looks like a sludge monster to me. Interesting choice. Let's see here. That's kind of similar to the other one, but... I feel it's most present. None of these, like, really feel depressing. Um... Eclipse Solstice. I guess I kind of see it. Like, I see it as a tunnel again. So... I don't really see a sword out of that. Mm. I guess the solar blade makes sense. Would make sense. Alright then. Just a few more. Um, that one, like, for some reason, I get joy out of that picture. Get, uh, or joy is represented in that picture. What do you feel best describes the picture? Uh, it's, it's purdy. I don't say purdy. P-U-R-D-Y, purdy. It's not really too much of a... Uh... Sure. That's not surprising. You know I was going to finish it. What emotion do you feel is present in this picture? <laughs> I don't want to say... No, not really. Not joy either. Chaos? Probably chaos. Gaseous. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna double down on the chaos here. I think this picture is called. Like, I see these as, like, shrouded figures, and, like, they're coming up to something. I don't know what, but... Yeah, kind of like that. Last one. They're all so similar. Ah, uh, this one... I don't know why, but joy comes to mind. What do you feel best? Describe this picture. Uh, yeah, music is good. I don't really see choir or voice. What do you think this picture is called? The Sound of Silence. Uh, yeah, probably that one best fits. I think that about wraps it up. Your answers have been documented well. Deep into your subconscious they dwell. But I'm not finished with you just yet. There are still some truths that have yet to be met. As a matter of fact, this is only the start. We will have a great deal of fun before we part. So let me challenge you on another level still. I will pick your brain until I get my fill. The next set of questions will test your conscience more. And again, I honestly, and your honestly, honesty I do implore. Let us begin. One year, you're running a little low on funds to purchase presents around the holidays, so you decide to spend one dollar and get everyone in your family a lottery ticket. You give, you give each of them their own lottery ticket and wish them the best of luck. The drawing is held and one of your family members hits the jackpot, but it's someone who you don't really get along with and just bought a present for out of moral obligation. They plan to keep all the money for themselves, as they feel it was their ticket. How does this make you feel? Um, I, I would honestly be indifferent to that. It might be a little annoying, but... I mean, I 
gave it to them. Um, it always causes a lot of problems. I see these stories in the news every now and then, but... But, like, if I don't like them, does it bother me? Not really. At the end of the day. And what would you wish to do in this situation? Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Try to steal their... T no, no, I wouldn't do anything like that. I'd just roll with it. If the roles were reversed and you were given a winning lottery ticket, would you share the money with your least favorite family member about the ticket in the first place? Would I? Like, if you don't like them? Maybe. It depends how much it is, I guess. If it's like they said the jackpot, so I'm assuming, like, a million dollars. Would I give them, like, 25000 or something? Probably. I see. Now you're walking through a forest, and you come across a black suitcase. Inside the case, there rests one million dollars. Alongside the money, there lies a bloodstained note with only one word written on it. The note simply says, don't. Let's <laughs> get there's blood. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's a. Uh... Yeah, I don't think I don't think I want that. I don't think I would take that. And what would you wish to do in this situation? I don't think I, I think I'd just leave it. Honestly. If the note wasn't covered in blood, would it change your decision at all? No, I don't think so, really. Because if there's a note in there that says something like that, I'm just assuming somebody's, like, in a tree or in the bushes. And if I touch any of it, they're going to, like, detonate a bomb that's hidden inside or something. Interesting. The devil appears in your room at night while you are alone, and you're just about to fall asleep, and tells you that he has a special one-time offer for you. In exchange for your soul and eternal damnation, he will let you choose from one of the three glorious bargains. He has not told you what these bargains are. That's, uh, yeah, no, no thanks there. No thanks, Mr. Mr. Evil Guy. The devil then goes on to assure you that whether or not you believe him to be truly the devil, he surely is. And to prove his point, he demonstrates magnificent magical prowess and drags you to hell for a split second before transporting you back to your bedroom. In that second, you could feel a lifetime of pain and suffering in the most unimaginable ways possible. He then goes on to tell you of his offers in exchange for your soul to see if he can strike a bargain. See if you can strike a bargain. Which of these would you choose in exchange for your soul, if any? It goes back to... It goes back... Like, life is short as hell. And, like, if you believe in that, you don't want to spend an eternity in there. And you said it was really bad for one second. No. Get, get out of here, Mr. DeVille. If the devil, de if the devil, devil, why do I keep saying devil? If the devil offered you a demon of, a deal of some other kind, would you accept an exchange? For, no. Get out of here, devil. He was the woman under my bed. Civilization is about to come to an end as a plague sweeps the globe, turning everyone who perishes into mindless zombies who hunger for living flesh. You watch as everyone you know becomes gravely ill and turns, except for five of your closest friends and family. Uh, I'm not that indifferent to life. <laughs> That's an extreme level of indifference. I have not... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. That'd be scary as hell. If you knew that the zombie apocalypse was coming in 10 years from now and you could prevent it from happening, why would you not? Why would I not? I mean, I could prevent... Interesting. 
You've been working at a company for 10 years and you've been promised a very important and incredibly lucrative promotion. However, someone hired only a number of weeks ago has just been promoted to the position that you were promised. Your boss essentially tells you tough luck and that maybe one day you'll get the position. And they had, he had to promote the employees as a favor for a friend. Uh, I'd be... Yeah. I, I would be mad about that. You've also learned a few secrets about the company that could be disastrous if they were to escape. Such as the fact that they haven't been properly reporting their income for the last decade. Uh, I, that, that's a situation you need to get just get away from. I mean, whether or not to report it is secondary. If the roles were reversed and you hired and promoted as a favor over someone more deserving, would you accept the position? Probably. I mean, it sucks, but... It sucks for them, but it's good for... I know it's kind of selfish, but... And you were hired and promoted as a favor over... I, I probably won't even know, but... Yeah, probably I would do that. I see. Very interesting. You're home alone at night, cooking food in your kitchen, and you turn around to realize that someone is watching you through the window in the darkness. They have their face and hands pressed up against the window, and they make a direct eye contact you before turning and running out of sight around the other side of the house. Uh, I, I, why? I'm like, why, why do you do that? What do you think you'd do in this situation? Uh... Well, I'm not leaving the house. I'm just saying, uh, probably just this. If you, if the face you saw in the window was a face of a supernatural entity and not a human being, uh, like if I saw the big foot, the large foot out there, would it change? <laughs> I don't know why my my mind went straight to Bigfoot, but, um. Probably not. Like, if I chose call the police, I probably wouldn't call the police. Yeah, there's a big foot. There is a large-footed creature outside. I'm going to present you with some more potential scenarios. But I'm going to ask for more simplistic answers as a result. Here we go. You're not feeling all too well, so you decide to go to the doctor. The doctor runs a series of tests and gets back to you shortly after to announce some grave news. It turns out that you've contracted an incredibly rare illness that there is currently no cure for. The illness causes complete body paralysis within six months of contraction, meaning that in less than half a year from now, you will be rendered unable to move, blink, talk, or any form of expression whatsoever. You will need to be kept alive on a feeding tube, and you'll never be able to communicate with anyone else ever again. Just being kept alive on machines in a vegetative state. Would you want to be kept alive in that state, or would you rather be... Um, please, just... No, I don't want to live like that. How would you like to spend the last months of your life while still mobile? Um... I don't really have, like... I don't really like further aspire to do much i mean like there are like i i don't know like i don't have major dreams maybe i should i have like ideas but that's not really anyway spending time with friends and family uh, making the world a better place while i can probably like in all honesty i'd probably withdraw a little bit but not like this like i wouldn't i'd probably try to improve things there are diseases ugh, there are diseases out there that can put you in a sort of unfortunate situation does knowing this motivate you to do things you've never done before and pursue more from life or do you feel relatively unaffected by the knowledge this could potentially happen to you uh, it really doesn't change anything i mean if it happens it happens but that's what i'd want it want to happen to me 
If you have a pet dog whom you've raised since its birth, three years have passed and it's the best dog you've ever had. You love it like it's your own child, and one day he runs away in the middle of the night chasing after a wild animal in the darkness. You search everywhere for your dog, but no matter what you do, you can't seem to make any progress. About a month passes and you still haven't found any trace of your four-legged friend, until one morning you awaken to the sound of a familiar barking. You rush outside to find that your elderly neighbor in his late 80s is out on the front lawn joyously playing with your dog. He has named the beast... Why? <laughs> Why beast made me laugh. He has named the beast Johnny, and him and your dog seem to be having the time of your lives. You rush over there and give your dog a hug and excitedly licks your face. Your neighbor said, Johnny's a good boy, isn't he? I lost him when I was just a boy. But he's come back. Okay. Johnny has come back and we're together again. Yeah, I was going to say, he's got to be, like, he's got to have dementia or something. Come to find out your elderly, elderly neighbor is suffering from dementia. Recently brought on by the stress of heartache over losing his wife just a couple months prior to finding your dog. The dementia has caused him to believe that your dog, Johnny, is the old dog from his childhood coming back into his life to make him happy and keep him company. The dog seems to be in great shape, very happy, and well look after. And you know that telling the old man that it really isn't his dog and that it's your dog would break his heart and crush him. Would you break the news to him and tell him that, okay, that it isn't his dog and take Johnny home with you? Or would you let him keep the dog and choose to... I, I'd probably just let him... At the end of the day, he's going to get more from it than I would. And he's right next door, so... Um, a little bit. Can you imagine yourself being in the old man's position and being so alone in life and finding one thing that makes you feel less alone and potentially having to face it being ripped away from you once again? I could imagine that. Next question. Let's say that you were viciously, <laughs> viciously murdered by a serial killer and you fell for one of their traps as they lured you in and made you their latest victim. Now, let's also say that you're given a unique opportunity in the afterlife as you return as a spirit to roam the earth. However, you're bound to two potential options, and only two. You can either choose to haunt your assailant and make his life miserable, hopefully foiling his plans to kill in the future and potentially save lives in the process. Or you can choose to spend your time as a spirit amongst your still living family and friends, guiding them in, oh, guiding them in positive ways and making their lives better. You are bound to whichever option you choose until your family and friends are no longer living or killing or the killer is no longer living. Well, one is based on lives, like people being alive. And then the other one is just improving the people you love's life. Um, probably this one overall would be the greater good. Do you think you have what it takes inside to drive your killer insane and push i don't know <laughs> uh probably like if you start hearing stuff he's gonna wig the hell out if he's not crazy already do you believe that this scenario is possible no i don't, don't believe in ghosts if this happens if this situation happened to a friend or family member and they were viciously killed what would you uh, the same the same one hmm next question one night you go to sleep and get a good rest that feels... What is that? A good rest? This is already bullcrap. A good rest that feels like you've... The best sleep you've ever had. You wake up in an unfamiliar room in an unfamiliar bed. You look in the mirror and hardly recognize yourself. You look like you've aged 20 years. There's a sticky note on the television that says press play. So you oblige the note and hit play... Hit the play button to reveal a message that has been left for you by all of your friends and family that were still alive and well, though they all seem to be 20 years older as well. They explain that every single day for the last 20 years, you've repeated the same day over and over again. Due to a severe head injury, your memory doesn't last more than 24 hours, so each day when you sleep, all recollection of what took place 24 hours prior is wiped out entirely. Your loved ones have made a video for you to let you have a say in your potential future. You have the option of either watching this video every single day so you know what's going on 
and can continue to progress in your life, even though you won't have any recollection of it. Or you can choose to continue living as you have been, repeating the same day over and over and living in ignorant bliss. Either way, I'm going to forget. Um, like, obviously, I know I've aged, but... Probably this. This is probably more... I mean, the truth is good, but again, I'm going to forget. So, I don't see what difference it makes at the end of the day, really. Would you be upset if your family kept the truth from you for 20 years, even though they felt like it was for your own good? In that situation? No. As long as we're still talking about the situation. The same situation. Like, probably if you put me in that situation, would I be upset? Yeah, if they hit it. But at the end of the day, I'd also... It, it's the same... Is that 20 years from now? I'm pretty much in the grave as it is. I'm just saying. Uh... <sighs> Legit, probably. If your best friend was in this situation, would you make a video for them telling the truth, or would you... I would probably make the video, just because... Coming from the other side, at least I told them. But, yeah, as for me, I think I'd rather just go on with it. You've come to find through frantic digging in the attic and the reading of old files and newspaper that your parents are famed psychologists. You've also come to find out they really aren't really your parents. In fact, they're not even related to you at all. From what you can gather through your new discoveries, the story tells of a young child who developed psychotic tendencies and went into a trance before murdering their parents in a tragically brutal way. However, that child suffered so much trauma from the event of the loss of their parents once the trance had worn off that they repressed the memory of their parents' death, blocking it completely from their mind. Two psychologists took the child into treatment and performed studies against the child's knowledge, raising that child to be a fully functional adult while playing the role of the child's real parents, who further get their data and potentially help that child avoid a terrible life in the process. You are that child. Would you resent your parents? I don't think so. Like, I would, I would get it from, like, a scientific point of view, like... But would I... Again, it's another one of those that, like, if you're there, probably at the moment, but at the end of the day... Like, they're the reason I'm okay now. That's a rough question. I, I, at the, probably at the end of the day, no. Would you be grateful that, yes, definitely. Would you feel that you betrayed, would you feel by betrayed by your parents? No. Would you confront your parents about the articles? Probably. If you were in your parents' position, would you do the same for a child in a similar... Oh, that'd be hard. If I was in my parents' position... Oh, is this... Oh. If you were in your parents' position, would you do the same for a child? I, I am not qualified to handle that. And somebody greater than me needs to do that. <laughs> I can't. I have one final scenario before we move on. The end of the world has come and gone, and all that's left is post-apocalyptic -post soldiers roaming the lands, combing through towns and laying waste to any survivors in their paths, in hopes of claiming their equipment for themselves in order to survive this harsh, barren wasteland known as planet Earth. You get in good with a large colony of soldiers and spend about six months with them before they decide that you're not pulling your weight in order to save the very few food, few food rations they have left. They exile you from the compound and send you out to fend for yourself. 
He decided to venture into a neighborhood in town in hopes of finding food that was left behind by raiders, and it only takes you about a day and a half before you strike gold. A hidden underground bunker stockpiled to the brim with enough food to feed an entire colony for a year. Um... I would stay there by myself, because these guys don't sound like they're a positive influence on the community. <laughs> if you choose uh, to only tell some of the soldiers about the bunker and let them in so they can lead a new colony, but exiled... This, it's not really about them... Like, I'd have to know, like, are these people killers? Like, or are they not killers? Or Because it sounds like... He just said, like, they're going town to town just murdering everybody. If you could choose to only tell some of the soldiers about the bunker and let them in so you could lead a new... I don't want to lead a new colony. Um, I'm just going to assume they're all murderous, crazy people. If you were to lead a new colony, would you build it based on savagery and raiding or would you build it based on sharing and compassion? I don't think that... I mean, if you're killing everybody, what's... No. If you're the colony that exiled you, except it was you who exiled someone else who wasn't pulling their weight, and that person just so happened to find themselves in a similar situation, where you found a jackpot worth of food and an underground bunky, bunky, bunker, but they refused to share with you in the colony, would you raid them and steal it for yourselves, or would you let them keep what they found? Well, if I am the raider, I'm going to raid them. That's what raider do. Very interesting. Well, that wraps up this portion of the test. But I need more from you before I allow you to rest. A choice here, a choice there. Which would you rather? Moral dilemmas abound from what I can gather. And you will answer clearly, crisp, and concise. Will you be selfish, or is your conscience a vice? In just mere moments from now, we both shall see. The difference between who you are and who you wish to be. Let us begin. Would you rather abandon the person you love most or be abandoned by the person you love the most? Oh. Ah, uh, they gotta do it. Would you rather have friends in high places who could get you anything you wanted but didn't necessarily care about you or friends who couldn't give you anything? Uh, th this one. Definitely. Would you rather find $10,000 and get to keep it for yourself or find $20,000, but have to split it four ways with your closest. Um, I mean, what's the difference? Like, $5,000 is really not that much more, so. Or less, I mean. Would you rather cheat on your partner? No, no. I, I wouldn't, I couldn't. I'd have to do that. Would you rather get rich through illegal means or be poor and live in... Uh, yeah, I just... Again, my brain doesn't, like, do... It does guilt very well. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just leave it like that. Would you rather press a button that would kill your favorite pret, pet or press a button that would kill you... Well, I mean... A pet has arguably less valuable than a family member. Would you gather... Would you rather get fired from a high-paying job or have to fire friends from a high-paying job? I, I wouldn't want to do that. Would you rather sleep with your step-sibling or sleep with your best friend's partner? I mean, we all seen those videos, but I ain't doing that to homie. Can't, I'm not going to do that to homie. Would you rather save your best friend from certain death and let... 1,000 strangers die or save one... Th oh, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. That's, that's too many people to... Would you rather get free food for the rest of your life or rescue a starving child from a third world, world country? I'm not, like, dying for food, so... Would you rather be rich but without family or poor uh, poor with family, definitely? Would you rather have to steal food for the rest of your life in order to eat or steal enormous amounts of money from the wealthy but have to destroy the money? 
Okay, let me read that again. Would you rather have to steal food for the rest of your life in order to eat or steal enormous amounts of money from the wealthy, but you have to destroy it immediately? Then what's the point of taking it? Like, you can't get food with it. Like, I don't get to go buy something and then have to destroy it. I, this one is the only one that makes sense. Oh, I, I guess kind of. Whatever. Would you rather serve four years in the military during wartime or move to a third world country and never be... Hmm. It depends what the war was about. Like, if we were under, like, a crazy Congress and they're like, we're going to go attack uh, uh, Haiti. <laughs> Why the fuck would you attack? Why? Oh, they got they got the monopoly on earthquakes. It's just like then I'd rather move to a third world country, but uh, but if it was like reasonable, there's not really any reasonable. There's not a lot of reasonable reasons to go to war, but probably that. Would you rather always be traveling ten miles above the speed limit or ten miles per hour below the speed limit? Probably above. I don't know why I'd want to go slower. Would you rather never have sex for the remainder of your life or have to have sex every day? What kind of question is that? Every day? <laughs> I mean, would you rather be addicted to hardcore drugs for 10 years but make a full recovery or addicted to alcohol for the rest? Oh. One of those has an end. Like hardcore. I don't even know like what the side effects really of hardcore drugs are. But, I mean, one of those has an end. And I'm not, at least, I'm not, like, a violent drunk. I'm, like, a chatty drunk. I haven't been drunk in two decades. Um, ooh. I'd probably want some end to it. Would you rather live to be 200 years old in a pers perfectly preserved youthful body and have to watch all your friends and family die around you or live to be 70 but die before your uh probably that one to oh well, that, that would be really i mean i kind of keep to myself for the most part anyway probably this like any more than like 200 though like no i don't like i wouldn't want to be live forever would you rather sacrifice all your friends in order to survive or sacrifice both of your parents Pro i mean family is not in every case but Like, I don't have, like, a huge group of people that I would consider friends, so. Um, so probably that. Would you rather get acknowledged for work that you didn't do or work hard for the rest of your life but not receive any praise for it? I already do that. Um, no, I don't want, like, I don't want a thing for, I'd be, like, Oh my god, here we go. Would you rather punch a nun or get punched by a nun? I'd rather punch the hell out of a nun. Would you rather lose all of the money you've earned this year or lose all the memories you've gained this year? Talana? I'd forget Talana. Right, all the... All the bye, Talana. I'll see you later. Would you rather flip a coin for a chance to win $20 or immediately win $120? Or a hundred ten dollars. I mean, neither one is really anything. So, would you rather know how you die or know when you'll die? Ooh, I don't want to know either of those. I wouldn't want to know when. That would be more terrifying. Would you rather be blind but able to see crystal clear underwater, or always be deaf? See, crystal, why would I want it? Like, I can't breathe underwater, so. 
I mean... I mean, you could put, like, a fishbowl on your head, I guess. Would you rather give up all internet and social media but be able to travel the world for free? Or have the best internet in the world for free but never leave your house? I mean, I pretty much do that anyway. Like, I don't have the best internet, but I pretty much never leave my house anyway. Would you rather walk bare foot across, across a bed of hot coals or walk bare through it through a pitch black snake infested corridor? Uh, the hot coals are potentially less fatal. Would you rather be the judge who sentences people to death? or the, uh, I, I don't want to. I mean, either way, I'm killing them. I'd rather be the judge, though. Would you rather have a witch cast a nasty hex on you, so you're always, you'll always have bad luck, or be haunted by a demon intent on possessing you? He's just seeking it. He's, he's not going to get it. Would you rather be married to someone incredibly beautiful who doesn't find you attractive, or be married to someone who you're not even remotely attracted to, but they find you incredibly attractive? Why would I marry them if I'm not even remotely attracted to them? Notice it doesn't say I'm attracted to the first one, too, but I mean, I guess they're incredibly beautiful, but could be dumber than a box of tree stumps. Um... That'd be a bad feeling. Like, I'm not going to go into that. Would you rather work in a high-paying job that you despise or in a low-paying job that you love doing? That's a good question, too. I think just to fund the hobbies, I would probably do that. Would you rather walk one mile home wearing nothing but a pair of socks or be fully clothed but have to walk 100 miles? Bro, that's like 230,000 steps. I'm going to walk a naked. Would you rather find $5 in your pocket or have to grab $100 out of a public toilet? I'm going to assume it's clean. It's pure flushed. I'm grabbing that hundo. Would you rather have 100 of your favorite books but never watch a movie again or have 100 of your favorite movies but never read a book again? I don't really do either anyway um oh, that's a good question too because I'm considering audiobooks like I'd, I'd like audiobooks way more than I like movies probably this one would you rather always, always be 20 minutes I hate oh two hours early Oh, God, that's so much time wasted. If you said 20 minutes early, I'd be down with that. But two hours? I'd rather be late at that point. Would you rather find a dead body or witness to a deadly assault? Well, either way, I'm finding a dead body. But, I mean, at least this way I get to see who done it. Would you rather be able to change your past or see what the future holds for you? I don't want to know what's coming. Would you rather have one really great friend or a hundred mediocre friends? I would like one great friend. <laughs> would you rather lose all of your teeth or lose one day off your life every time you kiss someone? That's a bizarre question. One day, I'm not even going to notice. Would you rather win the lottery and lose the ticket before you can collect your money, or see your worst enemy win the lottery? Lottery. I don't want that douche to win. Would you rather find true love? I don't even have a worst enemy. I'm just saying in that hypothetical scenario. Would you rather find true love or have your true love? Probably. Would you rather have a pause button for life or a rewind button? Like, what would a pause button do for you? Like, rewind would be way more helpful. Would you rather drown to death in gasoline or be boiled to death in water? <laughs> Bro. Which one would kill me quicker? Probably the gasoline. 
Neither are pleasant, obviously. Would you rather make a new friend every day or get $100 a day for doing nothing? And I, This one, definitely. Would you rather die to save your family or sacrifice your family to save yourself? Uh, yeah. Would you rather always be hated by those closest to you for something you didn't do? Or have hurt everyone you care about, but they'll never know it was... Wow, I'd rather hurt everyone... I'd rather be hated for something I didn't do. I'd rather hurt everyone I love without being blamed. I, like, I can't picture a scenario. That's kind of 50-50, really. Like, how hurt? <laughs> like, not like knife to the spine hurt. But just, uh, because being hated by the people closest to you would feel, mis like, that's probably going to be forever. And hurt does heal in time. Especially for something I didn't do. Probably leaning more towards this one. Would you rather sleep with your worst enemy or sleep with someone you know has many incurable SCDs? Uh, sure, we'll do a hate F. Would you rather only eat food you don't like or give up all liquids except for water? Probably this one. Because that's the healthiest option anyway. Might as well go for it. Would you rather listen to music at max volume or always listen to music just above the lowest volume? Well... Tonitis don't mess around and that I I would probably rather do that. I would rather meet would you rather meet your hero and find out that they don't like you or never meet your hero at all? Well, I'd probably change heroes after that. Would you rather never have a pet for the rest of your life or never have friend why never have pets? I don't have pets anyway. Would you rather live in excruciating pain for the rest of your life or pain free but everyone you know and love will be Oh my god will be in ex live in excruciating pain for the rest of their lives. Yeah, I... Thank you for answering my questions, but we are not yet done. For we have made it through many categories except for one. These final questions will be from deep within. I want to see your soul. I want to see your heart quick beat quicken. I want to learn all that you know. The nucleus is the, or the, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. I almost feel like that. I've been destroying to me. Stay in school. I want to see what makes you think. I want to know what makes you tick. That doesn't rhyme. You're a fraud, Destiny. I want to know your darkest truths. I want to know what makes you sell. Okay, that rhymes. Okay, I got you, Destiny. There you go. I want to expel the truth from yourself i want to feed on your precious fate i want to learn all of your love and bathe in all of your hate so one last time we sit together as we await the final revelation these are the last questions i have the last examination take your time do think hard savor every moment dearly for when i am finally finished with you you will see it ever so clearly and here we go. Choose one of the words that feels you resonates with you in this very moment. None of these, really. Uh, my floor needs to be vacuumed, so unclean. Choose one of these words that feels resonates with you. Um, interested? Do you ever lie to those who are closest to you? Not really. Have you ever hurt someone whom you know didn't deserve it? Have I ever? Again, if you're putting the have you ever, like, we're going back damn near 40 years now, so probably. But, like, not intentionally, probably. <laughs> probably. I don't, I can't think of a scenario off the top of my head. But probably. 
Have you ever lost your temper? Yes, definitely. I think everyone's been there. Have you ever intentionally hurt an animal? When I was younger, I think. Like, not... Like, beat the shit out of it, but... Have you ever blamed someone for something that they didn't know? Again, probably. When I, I'm going to go back to the animal thing. Like, I used to toss my dog rocks because I was stupid. And it probably hurt it. That, that's what came to mind there. I don't know why I did that. I was a stupid kid. Not even... Not even... Like, maybe barely high school. Anyway, moving on. Have you ever blamed someone for something that you know they didn't know? Like, if I know they didn't know it, no. Have you ever abandoned a pet? I haven't, no. Have you ever abandoned a loved one in their time of need? I don't think so. Have you ever stolen some something from someone you care about? Probably. Again, ever, probably. Have you ever broken something to spite someone that you cared about? I don't think so. Out of spite? No, I don't think so. Have you ever played the victim in a situation even though you hadn't been wronged? I get probably... I can't think of a current scenario, but we're going back to the have you ever. Have you ever had romantic feelings for someone who wasn't your partner while you... Yeah, I think that's kind of a natural thing. As long, I mean, if you're not acting on it, whatever. Have you ever wished for the death of someone who has wronged you? Not that I can think of, but probably. I mean, I'm sure I could sit and think for eight. Like, there's a lot of shit you say in the moment, right? Have you ever wished for the death of a loved one? I know. If you knew that writing someone's name on a piece of paper could instantly cause their death. No, no thanks. Do you feel like you could spend more time with your... Yeah, always. Have you ever owed someone an apology but refused to apologize to them? I'm trying to think of modern examples to these, but I, I can't think of anything modern. But again, probably. Probably. Do you ever regret worrying too much about things you can't control? No, if I can't control it, I can't really do much for it. Do you ever feel like your negativity brings other people down? Sometimes. Do you ever regret not standing up for yourself when you feel you've been wronged? Pro probably? He said, to, he said to take time and think about it, but I just... Nothing's coming to mind. I mean, if that if the situation did happen, yeah, I would be. What is the demon chorus in the background? I'm going to say yeah on that one. Do you ever feel like you let others influence your decision making too much? No, I don't think so. Do you ever wish that you lived a more honest life? I try to do that. Like, just from day to day. But it's not like that, like, I lie. It's just... I don't know how to word it. Probably? Probably. Has your dishonesty ever caused someone else to suffer? Again, probably. Have you ever had someone leave your life where you had a chance to tell them something important? No, I'm pretty <laughs> open about that stuff, especially now. Um, 
I don't think so. No examples come to mind. Do you ever feel like you prioritize people in your life that are unworthy of your time? Sometimes. Do you ever feel like you priori prioritize your own wants before those who need you most? Sometimes. Do you ever feel like you spend too much time working towards something that you're not truly passionate about? Like in the... Ooh. Not YouTube. I like doing YouTube, even though... I mean, it's not, I don't think it's ever going to go anywhere, but... But that's like the opposite example of what he's saying. Do you feel like you spend too much time working towards something that you're not truly passionate about? No, I don't think so. Not too much time. Do you feel like you're living up to your full... No. Do you ever let your fears stop you from pursuing things you truly want? Yes. Have you ever, re ever refused to try something bef because you were afraid that you would fail? Have I? Yeah, I think, like, ever? Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever been attracted to someone but refused to let them know because you were afraid of being rejected? That's like every guy ever. Do you ever feel as though you're chasing the wrong things in life? Yeah. Yeah, I've had that feeling. Do you ever feel like you spend too much time planning for the future that you ignore the present? No. Do you feel like your friends and family like you more than you like them? No. If it was worded the other way around, it would flip the answer. Have you ever loved a pet more than your family? No, not really. I don't think so. Do you ever make up excuses to get out of going to an event instead of just telling the person you invited that you just don't want to go? I have. <laughs> just be honest about it. Like, if you don't want to do something, that's fine. They will may or may not get it. Do you ever feel like you spend more time with technology than you do building strong... Absolutely. Have you ever defended someone that you shouldn't have? I... I don't think so. I don't think so. Do you sometimes have a hard time admitting when you're wrong? I think that's a, a natural thing, but... Do you ever have a do you ever place the blame for your personal failures on someone or something else? Something, usually, not someone. Have you ever accused someone of something with no real evidence to back it up? Again, have I ever? Probably. Like I always think back to like teenage years when I was just an a-hole. I mean, I'm still a bit of an a-hole, but, <laughs> but things have changed. I laugh now. Stupid. Um, again, probably. Have you ever had sex with someone who you know you shouldn't have? Probably, yeah. Have you ever had any kind of relationship with someone who you know? Yes. Have you ever let a relationship because you're afraid of being the one to break up? Yes. You ever feel like you could take better care of... Yeah, always. Have you ever let someone else take the blame for something you did? Again, there's no... Mod like, eventually you just learn to take responsibility for yourself, but... Like, my main, my brain always goes way back to, like, school days... Like, probably. Have I ever? I can't think of anything. So, I... I don't think so. Like, people knew it was me because I was a dick. <laughs> um, like, I wasn't that bad. I just, like, I didn't apply myself. Like, I wasn't a, a bully or anything in, like, high school and middle school, but... 
It's kind of like finding whatever. That's neither. That's not the question. Um, not that I can think of. Have you ever acquired something that you really didn't want just because I'm, someone else wanted it? No, that's not not really my style. Do you ever feel like you're not living up to other? Yeah, definitely. Have you ever walked out of someone's life without any explanation? Modern day of that would be the equivalent of like having somebody's contact information and just deleting it. Because you like, again, it goes back to like, if I didn't talk to them, I don't think they would talk to me. So yeah, I've done that fairly recently. Do you ever feel like you focus more on the negative aspects of your life and what you don't have rather than being grateful what you do? No, I don't really focus on the negative stuff that much. Have you ever witnessed someone being wrong but didn't have the courage to stand up for them? No, that'd be a very... I'd remember something like that. No, I, I don't think so. And finally... Do you feel like you're a good person? I don't remember what I answered to these. Like, overall, I think I'm okay. Could I be better? Hell yeah. Um, I don't know. This would be an answer that changes from day to day, really. I don't, I don't know. This is a hard question, and it shouldn't be. I think so. That concludes the ending to your examination. In your mind, I have dug myself a hole. I will an analyze your answers very carefully, and now it's time for me to gaze into your soul. This is preposterous. This simply cannot be. I have expected every potential outcome, but yours seems to have evaded even me. I was prepared to tell you of your fate, to play upon your fear, to break the worst of news to you, and to plant seeds of doubt within your ear. But as I have asked you to be honest with me, I must in turn be just as honest with you. For as much as I wish to lie, I am for sh I am forever shackled to the truth. From what I can deduct from your deep within, from everything you've shared with me, in return I will share this with you. This is what I see. Well, aren't you just a bucket of sunshine? It's incredible to me how you misunderstood you are. In fact, you're so misunderstood that you often don't understand yourself. Sometimes you just do things. You just do stuff. Why? Because you do. You don't need a reason. You just act. This is not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, this is such an amazing quirk that it's so perfect that is so perfect for someone who might just be madly in love with you. I doubt that. Your spontaneity is a gift that can bring a smile to a miserable face and a crying heart. Do not lose this gift. I'm freaking getting tingles. Stop. <laughs> I don't know why that gave me chills, but... With all of that being said, you are not where you want to be in life. You are not as happy as you lead on sometimes. And only those closest to you know how you really feel. Even then, they don't truly know, do they? Whatever you do, do not give up. Success and happiness for you is just around the corner. It's one enormous push on your part. It will take a lot of work, but you absolutely, positively can make something happen. Just understand that if you stumble, it is not the end of the world. You're always one big breakthrough away from something amazing. Keep at it for yourself and those around you. Your secret word is powerful. Remember this word. This will come in handy. If you received an ending that you've already received 
before from previous examinations. Remember, we did not ask you your secret words prior to taking this test. So that should be very telling. It means something very special. If your result was the same as something you previously got, we'd like you to add to the phrase twin words next to your secret word in the comments. If you received an entirely new outcome, that means you've got multiple layers of things to work on in your journey, or you may just have an extra layer of depth of your per to your personality. But only you know the answer to that. You've answered hundreds of... Mouse? Mouse? Uh-oh. I think the mouse died. You've answered hundreds of questions. You've formed deeper... Oh. There it goes. You've been enlightened, and you've helped others find enlightenment. Many people have wondered just what the test series is truly about. But it's simple. The answers are always so much more simple than we believe them to be. The test is about you. The reflection in your darkened screen. The one who seeks the answers. The person who seeks the answers. More than about being the answers. The test is more so about the questions. It's about making you think. It's about encouraging you to open up and admit that you're human. Just as human as everyone else. The test is about unity. The test is about compassion. The test is about bringing people together and showing the world that we're not so different after all. Look at all the secret words that have been left in the comments. Look at all of the thousands of people who are just like you. We all feel lonely sometimes. We all feel flawed. We all feel pain. But that's because every single human, every single one of us is human. The world judges one another based on so many variables, but they're most they're the most hypocritical set of variables imaginable. We judge each other and are judged ourselves by our peers who do the same exact shit they judge us for in the end. And that we judge them for too. You feel flawed because you are flawed. You feel afraid because you have the right to be. You feel overwhelmed because the world is overwhelming. Depression is overwhelming. Anxiety is overwhelming. Our problems are overwhelming. Suicide is an epidemic. We are losing loved ones before their time. And any of us can fall to the, on the hardest of times in our lives at any given moment. We can lose everything we know and love instantly and unexpectedly. But the one thing that we are not is alone. You are never alone. We're all flawed because we're all human. We're all scared because we're all human. We all fight these battles every single day because we're all human. But you never have to feel alone in your fight. Look at all the secret words that have been gathered that match yours. Look at all the worlds that words that don't match yours. Perhaps those people are going through struggles that you have yet to experience or know nothing about. And perhaps some others know not of yours either. But don't judge those who are struggling. Help them, just as you'd wish to be helped in your time of need. Don't be afraid to ask for help and to reach out to those who are. Everyone is suffering. Some of us just suffer quieter than others. We are all in this together. The test series has helped bring so many people together and make so many people feel less alone. We've read your comments and others are free to do so as well. We've read about these games. Oh, hold on. We've read about how these games have helped you. We've read about how much positivity they've spread. We've read how many people say their lives are forever changed. And I'll tell you one thing. If even one life was saved in the process of the social experiment, then it was worth conducting. Every single one of you that left a comment is a hero. By leaving comments, you helped spread the message out to others. You helped spread a positive light in a very dark time for so many people, and those people have you to thank for it. There are so many people in the world who do nothing for others, and they'll continue to do nothing for others. They won't lift a single they won't lift a finger in order to help others around them because they don't understand that someone is suffering just as much as they are. They're just too afraid to open up about it. But not us. We've all opened up quite a lot, haven't we? We were brave enough to answer these questions that so many people fear admitting to. 
We were brave enough to take the chance and leave the secret word as a symbol of our participation. And for that, Random Studios would like to thank you by not only placing your name in the credits at the end of the screen, the world knows good deals, spreading in bits, but we also got another surprise for you. Everyone who's left a comment in our titles, we can do so, will be put in the credits of our new massive project that we're working on. But that's not the good part. We'll also be going through and selecting names from those who leave comments in all of our titles and putting their names right into the actual game and storyline. Whether it be a special item, a piece of lore, or a character named after them, and so much. You've contributed your time and energy and help others in need. We want to make sure you're commemorated for your efforts and get admiration you deserve. Now, as far as your secret words go, your secret words play a vital, pivotal role in our new project. You will plug your secret words into different parts of your journey when they are requested of you, and they will alter the game in a way uniquely set for your specific words. This is an RPG where every choice matters, where every decision you make changes something about your session. This is an RPG that focuses on, the, on every human emotion and the decisions we make and how those decisions make us feel. Keep an eye out the future for our main project, Chasing Demons, where every NPC from all of our titles will be represented with a storyline, and the world will get to see how they all tie in together. You helped shape it. You helped make it what it is. And we will be sure to continue to add more and more players to the lore and gameplay as we read more and more of the comments left in our titles all the way up until its official release. And again, to commemorate those who participate across all the titles, we will be periodically selecting names from all of our titles. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us and everything you continue to do for the world. We greatly appreciate your feedback and support. We read every single comment. That's pretty much the ending stuff. Thank you for reading your secret words. That sounds very interesting. I'm curious to see if that is available yet. That's kind of the the why I do it. like not like I don't think my videos will have a save a life, but it's it's on a lesser scale. Like if it if it entertains one person, then I'm happy. You know, like I, that's really all I care about. I'm just trying to like be here to have fun and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, I wanted to see what did they say it was called. Oh, sorry, you can read that. I, I had Steam open. I was looking to see if I don't think the other game is. Where's the store page? I used to know how to navigate Steam. Uh, not the store page. I need, uh... Yeah, honestly, like, this one, like, the second one didn't hit as hard home, but, like, the first one and the third one, for some reason, like, I got not really emotional is the word, but, like, I don't know, I felt, like, something for it. So, I mean, it, I don't even know what to say about it, really. Um, I don't see... Probably go to their studio page, right? But yeah, these are... They're, they're absolutely amazing. Like, I'm really glad I, I did this for myself. Instead of watching somebody else play through the whole thing. Um... I don't even know when this was released, honestly. Honestly. I'm sure it says here somewhere, but... Uh, release date of October of 2020, so it's been it's been a while. This game's been out for a long time. I don't know how I never saw it. Uh, yeah, if if the 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 final thing ever does come out, or if it is out, I will definitely play through that because I'm I'm super invested in it. It's definitely worth like the six dollars to play all three. 
super worth it. Um, yeah, I, I just, I don't see anything off the nut. I don't have the... Oh, the testing chamber is what it's called. I could have looked that up, I guess. Get out of here. I don't need the calendar. I'm just curious that if it's a thing or not. Uh, no, no store store. Oh, Jesus. Stole pay. Uh, yeah, the testing chamber is, uh, something that is out that was released, uh, very recently, at the end of this past month, actually. So, yeah, I guess you can look forward to that. Uh, this one, the testing chamber is a little more expensive at $5, but, but I think that'll be another game that I'm going to play. So I will cut this one off here because it is quite long for one sitting for, oops, I don't know what I did, but yeah, that's it for now. D again, definitely worth, uh, throwing a couple bucks at these games to, to see what it says for you. It's, it's very interesting. Again, I love question games like this and just games that kind of dig into your personality and it's just it's really interesting but anyway that's it for now i'm takamasak see you later